You realize you're out of options. It's time to run. You excuse yourself from the line, looking embarrassed because it's your turn to pay. The cashier looks bewildered when you leave your shopping behind and stroll towards the door. There's no time for excuses. You need to be alone. You leave the supermarket and get into your car and ride it out alone. You wonder whether or not this one was the big one. The one you fear will push you over the edge mentally and physically. Ten minutes later, the panic subsides. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning. How in the world can you make it through the rest of the day? If you suffer from panic or anxiety attacks, the above scenario probably sounds very familiar. It may even be induced feelings of anxiety and panic just reading it. In fact, it was difficult for me just to write it. The particular situations that trigger your panic and anxiety may differ. Maybe the bodily sensations are a little different. What's important to realize is that panic attacks are very real to the people who are having them, and they should never be pushed off to the side. I remember one evening at home when I was by myself watching one of my favorite television programs. I thought I was in a safe place. There was no obvious trigger, and I felt completely relaxed. Out of nowhere, I began having the symptoms of a panic attack. The four walls in my living room were closing in around me. I couldn't breathe, and I felt like I was dying. I stepped out on my front porch for some fresh air and began deep breathing exercises. The symptoms eventually went away, but it left me wondering why exactly I had the attack. There are no obvious reasons, no stressful situation, and no indication that a panic attack might be impending. That's the strange thing about panic. Sometimes your mind can play tricks on you. Even when you think there's no danger of having a panic attack, your brain might feel differently. That's the scary part. The good part is that there's always ways to combat panic attacks and cope much better when you find yourself in that situation. Dealing with panic attacks. If you have panic attacks, it may help to comfort you that you're not alone. You're not even one in a million. In America, it's estimated that almost 5% of the population suffer from some sort of anxiety disorder. For some, it may be the infrequent panic attacks that only crop up in particular situations, like when you have to speak in front of others, while for other people, it can be frequent and reoccurring, and it inhibits them from leaving their home. Frequent panic attacks often develop into what medical physicians refer to as anxiety disorder. There are many ways of coping with an anxiety disorder. Some may not work for you, but others just might. It helps to know some of the most common coping techniques for dealing with panic attacks when they begin. Your first step is to recognize when a panic attack is about to begin. When you have enough of them, you start to really pay attention to the tingling sensation, the shortness of breath, and the disconnection from the real life around you. Many people I talk to wonder what that disconnection is like. They have a hard time understanding it. Those of us who have panic attacks are all too familiar with it. It's like you look at a solid object to see it and see that it's not there. You know it's there, but a part of your mind doubts that it really is there. You may find yourself reaching out to touch an object just to be sure. You feel like you're not a part of the world around you. It's as if you're just a spectator in your own life and you have no control over anything around you. This is a horrible feeling. How do you start trying to combat your panic attacks? What if I told you the trick to ending panic and anxiety attacks is to want to have one? That sounds strange, even contradictory, doesn't it? But the way really does help push it away. Does this mean that you should be able to bring on a panic attack at this very moment? Absolutely not. What it means is that when you're afraid of something, in this case a panic attack, it'll be more likely to appear and wreak havoc. But when you stand up to the attack, your chances of fending it off are much greater. If you resist a situation out of fear, the fear around that issue will persist. How do you stop resisting? You move directly into it, into the path of the anxiety, and by doing so, it cannot persist. In essence, what this means is that if you daily, voluntarily seek to have a panic attack, you cannot have one. Try in this very moment to have a panic attack, and I guarantee you, you cannot. You may not realize it, but you've always decided to panic. You make the choice by saying, this is beyond my control, whether it be consciously or subconsciously. Another way to appreciate this is to imagine having a panic attack as like standing on the edge of a cliff. The anxiety anxiety seemingly pushes you closer to falling over the edge. To be rid of your fear, you must metaphorically jump. You must jump off the cliff and into the anxiety and the fear and all the things that you fear most. How do you jump? You jump by wanting to have a panic attack. Your real safety is the fact that a panic attack will never harm you. That's a medical fact.
Anxiety causes an imbalance in your life whereby all of the mental worry creates a top-heavy sensation. All of, you fo- all of your focus is moved from the center of your body to your head. Schools of meditation often like to demonstrate an example of this top-heavy imbalance by showing how easily the body can lose its sense of center. The key to overcoming panic, panic attacks is to relax. That's easy to say, but difficult to do. A good way to do this is to concentrate on your breathing, making sure it's slow and steady. One of the first signs of a panic attack is difficulty breathing, and you may find yourself panting to catch your breath. When you focus on making those breaths even, your heart rate will slow down and the panic will subside. Breathing more slowly and deeply has a calming effect too. A good way to breathe easier is to let all the air out of your lungs. This focuses your lungs to reach for a deeper breath next time. Continue to focus on your out of breath, letting the, all the air out of your lungs, and as soon you'll find that your breathing is deeper and you feel calmer. Ideally, you want to take the focus off the fact that you're having a panic attack. Try to press your feet one at a time into the ground. Feel how connected and rooted they are to the ground. An even better way is to lie down with your bottom near a wall. Place your feet against the wall, your knees bent apart, and press your feet one at a time into the wall. If you can breathe in as you press your foot against the wall and breathe out as you release it, it will be more effective. You should alternate between your feet. Do this for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the panic attack subsides. Use all your senses to take full notice of what you see, hear, feel, and smell in your environment. This will help you to remain present. Panic is generally associated with remembering upset, upsetting events from the past or anticipating something upsetting in the future. Anything that helps keep you focused in the present will be calming. Try holding a pet, looking around your room and noticing the colors, textures, and shapes, listening closely to the sounds you hear, or call a friend, or smell the smells that are near you. Many people strongly advocate aromatherapy to deal with the panic with panic and anxiety. Lavender can have an especially calming and soothing effect when you smell it. You can find essential oil of lavender at many stores. Keep it handy and take a sniff when you start feeling anxious. Try putting a few drops of lavender essence oil into some oil, olive or grapeseed oil, and rub it on your body. Keep a prepared mixture in a dark glass bottle for when you need it. You can even prepare several bottles with a small one to carry with you. Other essential oils that are known to help panic and panic attacks are helichrysum, frankincense, and marjoram. Smell each of them and use what smells best to you, or a combination of your favorite oils mixed in olive or grapeseed oil. You may want to prepare yourself before a panic attack happens. When you're not in a panicked state, make a list of the things that you are afraid of that are going to happen or that could happen. Then write out calming things that tell you the opposite of your fears. Then you can repeat those to yourself when the panic starts to come. Prepare a list of things to do in case of a panic attack, and it will be ready for you when you need it. Fill it with lots of soothing messages and ideas of calming things to do. I find this to be a very helpful tool. I'm never without my small notebook that has all these positive affirmations in it. Panic can be a very scary thing to go through, especially if you're, if you're alone. Preparing for when the panic attack arrives can really help reduce the panic and even sometimes helps to prevent it. Another great tool to combating anxiety and stress is to use visualization. Calm yourself with visualization. The purpose of visualization is to enable you to quickly clear mental stress, tension, and anxious thinking. The visualization can be used when feeling stressed and is particularly useful when your mind is racing with fearful, anxious thinking. This visualization process, when practiced frequently, is very effective for eliminating deep-seated mental anxieties or intrusive thoughts. To maintain maximum benefit, the exercise must be carried out for longer than 10 minutes at a time, as anything shorter will not bring noticeable results. There is no right or wrong way to carry out the visualization. Be intuitive with it, and do not feel that you are unable to carry it out if you feel that you are not very good at seeing mental imagery. As long as your attention is on the exercise, you will gain benefit. It's best to do this exercise in a quiet place where you won't be disturbed, and then when you're more practiced, you'll be able to do the same positive results 
in a busier environment, such as in the workplace. You should notice a calming effect on your state of mind, along with a sensation of mental release and relaxation. Either sitting or standing, close your eyes and move your attention from your breath. To become aware of your breathing, place one hand on your upper chest and one hand on your stomach. Take a breath and let your stomach swell forward as you breathe in and fall back gently as you breathe out. Take the same depth of breath each time and try to get a steady rhythm going. Your hand on your chest should have little or no movement. Again, try to take the same deep breath each time that you breathe in. This is called diaphragmic breathing. When you feel comfortable with this technique, try to slow down your breathing rate down by instituting a short pause after you've breathed out and before you breathe in again. Initially, it may feel as though you're not getting enough air in, but with regular practice, this slow rate will soon start to feel comfortable. It's often helpful to develop a cycle where you count to three when you breathe in, pause, and then count to three when you breathe out, or two or four, whatever is comfortable for you. This will also help you focus on your breathing without any other thoughts coming into your mind. If you're aware of other thoughts entering your mind, just let them go and bring your attention back to counting and breathing. Continue doing this for a few minutes. If you practice this, you'll begin to strengthen the diaphragmic muscles and it will start to look and work normally for you, leaving you with a nice relaxed feeling all the time. Now move your attention to your feet. Try to really feel your feet. See if you can feel each toe. Picture the base of your feet and visualize roots growing slowly out down through the soles and down to the earth. The roots are growing with quickening pace and are reaching deep into the soil of the earth. You are now rooted firmly to the earth and feel stable like a large oak or redwood tree. Stay with this feeling of grounded safety and security for a few moments. Once you've created a strong feeling or impression of being grounded like a tree, visualize a cloud of bright light forming way above you. A bolt of lightning from the luminous cloud hits the crown of your head and ignites a band of bright white descending light that comes slowly over your head all the way down your body and over your legs and past your toes. As the band of light passes over you, feel it clearing your mental state. It's illuminating your mind and clearing any disturbing or stressful thoughts that you may have or have been thinking about. Repeat this image four or five times until you feel a sense of cleansing and clearing and release from the, anx- from the anxious thinking. In finishing, see yourself standing under a large luminescent waterfall. The water is radiant and bubbling with vitality and life. As you stand under the waterfall, you can feel the water running over every inch of your body, soothing you and instilling you with a sense of deep calm. Try to taste the water. Open your mouth and let it run into your mouth, refreshing you. Hear it as it bounces off the ground around you. The water is life itself and is washing away stress and worry from your body. After a moment, open your eyes. Try to use all your senses when carrying out this visualization. To make the pictures in your mind as real as possible, use your senses of touch, taste, and hearing. Feel the water trickling down your body. Hear the sound it makes as it splashes over you. The more realistic the imagined scenarios, the more benefit you'll gain. Many people report very beneficial and soothing results from just these simple visualizations frequently. The mind is much like a muscle in that in order to relax, it needs regular release of what it's holding on to. You can use any situation or location that will help to calm you. We listen to things like finding your happy place. Maybe you feel relaxed in a swimming pool or on the beach. Imagine yourself there. Just make sure whenever you go into your mind, it's a place where you can be calm and rested. By visualizing the different situations, you are allowing your mind to release. It's like sending a message to your brain that when you close your eyes and begin this process, it's time for letting go, and anything that's been mentally holding on to you, including anxious thinking, will dissolve. In order to train your mind how to let go of the stress, it's important to practice this daily. With practice, you can learn to release all stress within minutes of starting the experience. Your daily practice should be taken before going to bed, so that will enable you to sleep more soundly. Many people do not do these visualizations in the bedroom, but some other room before going to bed. That way, when you enter the bedroom and close the door, you're leaving the mental stress and anxious thinking behind you. 
Just be sure that you have the opportunity to totally concentrate on your mental images. Visualization is a tool for dealing with mental stress and it's very effective. If such visualization is carried out properly, you can reach a deep feeling of inner calm. This technique probably will not work in helping to end an anxiety attack, but it can help that attack from beginning. It's a very powerful support tool for your ridding yourself of general anxiety sensations. With practice, you can go days without having anxious thinking interrupt your life, and importantly, this significantly reduces the level of general anxiety that you feel. Visualization is a tool that you can use to overcome anxious thoughts and feelings. Let's look at various ways that you can combat excessive stress beginning with music. Using music to beat stress. Listening to music will also alleviate stress. Everyone has different tastes in music. You should listen to the music that makes you feel comfortable, sitting down and forcing yourself to listen to relaxation music that you don't like may create stress, not alleviate it. Music is a significant mood changer and reliever of stress, working on many levels all at once. The entire human energetic system is extremely influenced by sounds. The physical body and chakra centers respond specifically to certain tones and frequencies. Special consideration should be given to the positive effects of one actually playing or creating music themselves. Among the first stress-fighting changes that take place when we hear a tune is an increase in deep breathing. The body's production of serotonin also accelerates. Playing music in the background while you're working has been found to reduce the stress of the workplace. Music was found to reduce heart rates and to promote higher body temperature, an indication of the onset of relaxation. Combining music with relaxation therapy has more effective than doing relaxation therapy alone. Many experts suggest that it's the rhythm of the music or the beat that has the calming effect on us, although we may not very consciously realize that. When in your mother's womb, we are influenced by the heartbeat of our mother. We respond to the soothing music at later stages in life, perhaps associating it with the safe, relaxing, protective environment provided by our mothers. Music can be one of the most soothing or nerve-wracking experiences available. Choosing what will work for any individual is difficult. Most will choose something they like instead of what might be beneficial. In doing extensive research on what any given piece of music produces in the psychological response system, many unexpected things were found. Many of the so-called meditation and relaxation recordings actually produced adverse EEG patterns, just as bad as hard rock and heavy metal. The surprising thing was many selections of Celtic, Native American, as well as various musics containing loud drums or flutes were extremely soothing. The most profound finding was that the the music performed live and even at moderately loud volumes, even if somewhat discordant, had very a very beneficial response. As we mentioned before, no single music is a good fit for everyone. People have different tastes, and it's important that you like the music that's being played. I recently picked up a rest and relaxation CD that has done wonders for me. It has the sounds of the ocean in the background while beautiful piano music plays. I find this very soothing. It's not a good idea to play ballads or songs that remind you of a sad time in your life when you're trying to de-stress. You're trying to relax and wash away the anxious thoughts. The last thing you need is for a sad song to bring up unhappy memories. Here's some general guidelines to follow when using music to de-stress. To wash away stress, try taking a 20-minute sound bath. Put some relaxing music on, then lie in a comfortable position on a couch or the floor near the speakers. For a deeper experience, you can wear headphones to focus your attention and to avoid distraction. Choose music with a slow rhythm, slower than the natural heartbeat, which is about 72 beats per minute. Music that has repeating or cyclical patterns is found to be effective in most people. As the music plays, allow it to wash over you, rinsing off the stress of your day. Focus on your breathing, letting it deepen, slow in, and become regular. Concentrate on the silence between the notes in the music. This keeps you from analyzing the music and makes relaxation more complete. If you need stimulation after a day of work, go for a faster music rather than slow, calming music. Turn up the volume and dance. It doesn't matter if you can actually dance. Just move along with the music and do what feels good. You'll be shocked at the release you can feel. 
When going, the going gets tough, go for a music that you're familiar with, such as childhood favorites or favorite oldies. Familiarity often breeds calmness. Take walks with your favorite music playing on your iPod or your MP3 player. Inhale and exhale in tune with the music. Let the music take you. Combining exercise, imagery, and music is a fantastic stress reliever. Listening to the sounds of nature, such as the ocean waves or the calm of a deep forest, can reduce stress. Try taking a 15 to 20 minute walk if you're near the seashore or a quiet patch of woods. If not, you can buy tapes with these sounds in many music stores. Another great relaxation technique is self-hypnosis. Self-hypnosis for stress. You can also practice self-hypnosis on your own. Find a quiet place where you can fully relax and listen to your inner voice. Don't try to make something happen. Just let your mind listen and relax. A large part of achieving a hypnotic state is to allow it to actually happen. Don't watch for certain signs or signals that you might be in a hypnotic state. If you look for these signs and signals, you won't be able to fully relax and gain the benefits of self-hypnosis. There are lots of different ways to experience hypnosis. Although no two people will have exactly the same experience, everyone will find the hypnotic state pleasant. There are no bad trips in hypnosis. Keep in mind that your self-hypnosis is a skill and that you will continue to get better at it. The more experienced you become, the more powerful self-hypnosis is. Set up a schedule of practice, allowing yourself between 10 and 30 minutes of uninterrupted time. If possible, practice during the best part of your day, at a time when you're least likely to be disturbed by others. Most people find the best practice lying down in a comfortable position with as few distractions as possible. If you're bothered by noise while you practice, you can try to block out some of the other source with sound. You can try stereo music in the background or white noise if you like. If, like most people, you don't have a white noise generator, try tuning a radio receiver between stations. The static you get will be that that's similar to white noise. However, this takes an older or cheaper FM receiver without a noise suppressor. Sometimes AM tuners can do this for you as well. This should just be the background noise and not too loud to be distracting. The basic divisions of hypnotic in induction are relaxation, deepening, suggestion application, and termination. Number one is relaxation. Your first job in the hypnotic induction is to slow the juices down and get yourself relaxed. But don't try to force your mind to relax. If you get yourself physically relaxed, your mind will follow. Relaxation, really deep relaxation, is an ability that most people have either lost or never developed. Some people can do it quite easily. Others cannot. They just let go of their tensions and let every part of their body become limp and relaxed. If you're one of these people, begin your self-hypnosis practice by getting nicely relaxed. Take your time. This is not something that you want to rush. The time involved for the relaxation phase of your self-hypnosis induction can vary from half an hour to just a few seconds. It's an important part of the induction and should not be slighted. As you get better at and your skills increase, you'll recognize deeply relaxed states and you'll be able to achieve them in a surprisingly short time. But as a beginner, take your time. It will be time well spent. A very popular method of deep relaxation is the Jacobson Progressive Relaxation Procedure. This involves tensing each of the major muscle groups of your body, your foot and your lower leg on each side, upper leg and hip, abdomen, etc. Tense the muscle groups for a few seconds and then let go. Number two is the deepening procedures. Once you've completely relaxed and your relaxation phase is complete of your self-hypnosis induction procedure, you can begin the deepened relaxation state. At some time between the deep relaxation and the deepening procedures, you'll move into a hypnotic state. You probably won't know it, especially as a beginner, but it will happen sooner or later. One of the first hurdles a beginner must get over is the compulsion to watch for it. That is, you'll keep waiting for hypnosis to happen. For some change in your awareness or the way that you feel that you will say to you, oh, you're hypnotized. Watching for hypnosis will definitely get in your way if you don't get it out of your mind. Going into a hypnotic state in this respect similar is similar to going to sleep. If you try to catch yourself going to sleep, if you try to be aware of the precise instant in which you actually go to sleep, you're much less likely to go to sleep. Watching keeps you awake. In, these, in the same way, 
You will not know when you go into a hypnotic state, but that won't be because you lost consciousness. You just won't. Later, after you have been practicing regularly for a few weeks or a month or two, you'll be much more familiar with yourself, and you'll know how it feels to be hypnotized. Does it take everyone weeks or even months to get into a good hypnotic state? Definitely not. Some people have an amazing experience the very first time they try it. Others might practice for several days, noticing nothing, and then suddenly they have one of those great induction sessions in which they know something stupendously good happened. But if you're not one of those people, don't worry about it. Just keep practicing, and it will eventually get there. One of the most popular deepening procedures is called the countdown technique. Hollywood also likes this one. That's why you see it in so many movies, and that's this with the swing of a watch. To use the countdown technique, you simply start counting backward from, say, 20 or 100 or whatever you prefer. Adjust the countdown number to what feels right, and after you've been practiced several times. Imagine that you're drifting deeper with each count. Other images and thoughts will probably intrude themselves as you count. It's natural. Just gently brush them aside, continuing on with your counting. The speed with which you count down should be natural, not too fast, not too slow. For most people, this means counting at a rate of about one count for every one or two seconds. Do it at a rate that feels comfortable and relaxed to you. Some people like to tie their count with their breathing. As they drift deeper, their breathing slows down, so their counting also slows down. Don't count out loud. Just think the way that you count and keep counting down. You want to avoid as much physical involvement and movement as possible. Number three, suggestion application in self-hypnosis. Once you've reached the end of your deepening procedure, you're ready to apply suggestions. What you've done during the relaxation and deepening process is to increase your suggestibility. That is, you've opened up your subconscious mind at least a little bit to receive your suggestions. This works because of the particular and peculiar characteristics of the subconscious mind. The most common and easiest way to apply suggestions is to have them worked out ahead of time, properly prepared, worded, and memorized. It should not be too difficult to remember them because they should be rather short and they're and you're the one who composed them. If you have them ready and remembered, you can simply think your way through them at this point. Dialogue, or more properly monologue, is also okay. You just talk inside your head to yourself about what it is that you want to do, to become, or whatever. Don't say you. This is about you, so make sure when you think, you do it in the first person. For example, I'm eating less and becoming more slender every day. Elaborated suggestions are generally wordier and more of an ad lib. Food is becoming less important to me every day, and I'm filling my time with more important and meaningful pursuits than eating. It's just getting easier and easier to pass up desserts and other fattening foods, and so on. Generally speaking, the most effective kind of suggestion is image suggestion. Image suggestions usually do not use language at all. You can liken this to seeing yourself in a calm, relaxed state while in the middle of a chaotic situation. Actually, see yourself in your mind's eye. Although people sometimes see immediate results from their suggestions, it's more likely that it's going to take a little bit of time for them to kick in, so don't be impatient. On the other hand, if you have not begun to see some results within, say, a couple of weeks, you need to change your suggestions. Number four is termination. Once you've finished applying suggestions, you can terminate your session. You could just open your eyes, get up and go about your business, but that's not a good idea. You should formally identify the end of every session, By doing this, you provide a clear boundary between the hypnotic state and your ordinary conscious awareness. A clear termination also prevents your self-hypnosis practice sessions from turning up into a nap. If you want to take a nap, take a nap. If you don't do it in a a way that sleeping becomes associated with self-hypnosis practice. If you're practicing at bedtime and you don't care if you go to sleep, that's okay. But still draw the line in your mind to indicate the end of your self-hypnosis session. To terminate the session... Think to yourself that you're going to be fully awake and alert after you count up to three. One, I'm beginning to come out of it, moving toward a waking state. Two, I'm becoming more alert, getting ready to wake up. Three, I'm completely awake. Self-hypnosis can work wonders when it is practiced on a regular basis. You'd be amazingly surprised at the level of relaxation that you can get into. 
Now we'll move on to stress management techniques. Stress management. We know that stress is part of our lives, and there's no getting away from it. In fact, some stress is good stress. It can motivate you to do things that you would not do in a relaxed state. Stress can make you brave enough to go forward when normally you would hesitate. You have to be resilient in order to effectively cope with stress and help it enhance your life instead of controlling it. How do you get strong and resilient? By learning how to take control of your stress and make it work for you instead of against you. Recognizing stress symptoms can be a positive influence in that we're compelled to take action, and the sooner the better. It's not always easy to discern why you have the stress in each situation, but some of the more common events that trigger these emotions are the death of a loved one, the birth of a child, a job promotion, or a new relationship. We experience stress when we readjust our lives. Your body is asking for help when you feel these stress symptoms. There are three major approaches to managing stress. The first is the action-oriented approach. In this method, the problems that cause stress are identified and necessary changes are made to alleviate them. The next approach is emotionally oriented, where you overcome stress by giving a different color to the experience that caused stress. The situation which causes stress is seen humorously or from a different angle. Sometimes you can't avoid the stressor, but you can learn to see the humor instead of the doom. The third way is acceptance-oriented approach. This approach focuses on surviving the stress caused due to some problem in the past. The first stress management tip is to understand the root cause of your stress. No one understands your problem better than you do. A few minutes spent to recognize your true feelings can completely change the situation. During this process, identify what triggers the stress. Share this with a loved one if you can. If you're overstressed, you feel that you're going to collapse, take a breath and count to 10. This pumps extra oxygen into your system and rejuvenates your entire body. When under severe stress, meditate for a moment and pull out of the current situation for a little while. Stand up from your current position and walk. Stretch yourself and soon you'll find that stress has lessened. This is because you have relaxed. Relaxation is the best medicine for stress. Smiling is another form of stress management. If you're in the workplace, just stand up and smile at your colleagues in the, fan, in the far corner. You'll see a change in your mood. You can also invent your own stress management tips. The basic idea is to identify the cause of stress and pull out from, from it for that moment and then deal with it. Taking a short walk and look at nature can be another stress reliever. Drinking a glass of water or playing some small game it's a simple stress management technique. The whole idea is change the focus of attention. When you return to the problem, it does not look as monstrous. Here are five quick steps that you can take toward relieving stress. Number one, don't just sit there. Move. According to many psychologists, motion creates emotion. When you're idle, it's easy to become depressed. Your heart rate slows down, less oxygen travels to your brain, and you're slumped somewhere in a chair, blocking air from reaching your lungs. Right now, regardless of how you are feeling, get up and walk around at a fast tempo. Even jump up and down a little bit. It may sound silly, but the results speak for themselves. Try it for a few minutes. It works like magic. Exercise can be a great stress buster. People with anxiety disorders might worry that aerobic exercise could bring on a panic attack. After all, when you exercise, your heart rate goes up, you begin to sweat, and your breathing becomes heavier. Don't panic. It's not an attack. Tell yourself this over and over while you're exercising. Realize that there's a big difference between the physical side of exercise and what happens when you exercise. Number two, smell the roses. Go on that trip that you've been dreaming about. Visit an old friend. Paint a picture. Just do something for yourself. It'll jolt your imagination and spur your creativity and help you detach from your other daily routines. Number three, Help others cope with their problems. It's very therapeutic when you engross yourself in helping others. You'll be surprised how many people's problems are worse than your own. You can offer others assistance in countless ways. Don't curl up in your bed and let depression take hold of you. Get out and help somebody. But be careful. Don't get caught up in other people's problems in an attempt to forget about your own. Number four, laugh a little. You've heard that laughter is good internal medicine. It relieves tension and loosens the muscles. It causes blood to flow to the heart and the brain. More importantly, laughter releases a chemical that rids the body of pains. 
Every day, researchers discover new benefits of laughter. Let me ask you this question. Can you use a good dose of belly-shaking laughter every now and then? Of course you can. What are you waiting for? Go to a comedy club or rent some funny movies. Number five, wear your knees out. If there were one sustainable remedy I could offer when the going gets tough, it would be prayer. Many people depend on their faith, might call it meditation. It doesn't matter what you call it as long as you have a place to run to. There are no quick fixes when you're feeling stressed. So want more? No problem. More stress management. Number six, make stress your friend. Acknowledge that stress is good and make stress your friend. Based on the body's natural fight or flight response, that burst of energy will enhance your performance at the right moment. Top sportsmen are not relaxed before a big competition. Use stress wisely to push yourself that little bit extra harder when it counts the most. Number seven, stress is contagious. What we mean by this is that negative people can be a huge stress factor. Negativity breeds stress and some people do nothing but complain. Don't get caught up in their downing behavior. Recognize that these kinds of people have their own stress and then limit your contact with them. You can try to play stress doctor and teach them how to better manage their stress, but be aware that this may contribute more to your own stress, so tread lightly. Number eight, copy good stress managers. When people around you are losing their heads, watch for who keeps calm. What are they doing differently? What is their attitude? What language do they use? Are they trained and experienced? Figure it out from afar and then sit them down for a chat. Learn from the best stress managers and copy what they do. Number nine, use heavy breathing. You can trick your body into relaxing by using heavy breathing. Breathe in slowly for a count of seven, then breathe out for a count of 11. Repeat the 7-11 breathing until your heart rate slows down, your sweaty palms dry off, and things are starting to feel more normal. Number 10, stop stress thought trains. It is possible to tangle yourself up in the stress knot all by yourself. If you're constantly expecting the worst to happen and say negative things to yourself, for example, if this happens, then that might happen, and then we're all up the creek. Most bad things never do happen, so don't waste all the energy worrying needlessly. Give stress thought trains the red light and stop them in their tracks. Number 11. Know your stress hotspots and trigger points. Presentations, interviews, meetings, giving difficult feedback, tight deadlines, these are all things that you can get that can get your heart racing. Make your own list of stress trigger points or hotspots and be specific. Is it only presentations to a certain audience that get you worked up? Does one project cause you more stress than another? Did you drink too much coffee? Knowing what causes your stress is powerful information as you can take action to make it less stressful. Number 12, eat, drink, sleep, and be merry. Lack of sleep, poor diet, and no exercise wreaks havoc on your body and mind. Kind of obvious, but worth mentioning, as it's often ignored as a stress management technique. Listen to what your mother used to say and don't burn the candle at both ends. Avoid using artificial means to dealing with your stress. That means don't automatically pour a glass of wine when you think you're about to get stressed out and don't light up a cigarette. In actuality, alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, and drugs can make the problem worse. A better idea is to practice the relaxation techniques that you've learned here. Then, once you're relaxed, you can have a glass of wine if you want to. Number 13. Go outside and enjoy Mother Nature. A little sunshine and activity can have an amazing ramification on your stress level and will enhance your entire outlook towards life. Your improved attitude will have a positive effect on everyone in your family and your circle of friends. Things that once seemed overwhelming will soon become trivial matters, causing you to wonder what the predicament was. Not only will you be less stressed, you'll be healthier, happier, and more energetic ready to face whatever obstacles come your way. Number 14, give yourself permission to be a kid again. Be carefree and creative. Allow your freedom to express yourself and don't worry that you're not keeping with the image of who you're supposed to be. Just relax and enjoy yourself. We all have an inner child, let it free. Number 15, don't set unrealistic goals for yourself. Many people set themselves up for defeat simply by setting unrealistic goals. 
whatever your goal is, allow sufficient time to reach it and realize that setbacks will probably happen. Number 16, learn that it's okay to say no occasionally. Many people feel that they have to say yes to everyone. You can't be all things to everybody. You must first meet your own needs before you can give it give to others. Number 17, make time for yourself your number one priority. Once your own needs are met, you'll find you have more time for others. And you may find more pleasure in helping others when you don't feel that you must always put others' needs before your own. Number 18, this is a great idea that works. Okay, ready? Yell. That's right, scream at the top of your lungs as long as you can. While this may not be feasible in your home, it works great when you're in the car with the windows rolled up. Let out a guttural yelp from deep down inside. It's liberating. Number 19, sing. Music is extremely beneficial to rid yourself of stress. Think how much better you'll feel when you belt out Copacabana at the top of your lungs. Who cares if you can't carry a tune? You're doing this for you. Number 20, take up a new hobby like knitting or crocheting. Don't worry about being good at it. It's the process that's beneficial. Sitting still while performing repetitive movements is calming and stabilizing for many people. It can be time to collect your thoughts. Number 21. Start a garden. Even apartment dwellers can do this. Inside in pots, pots on the patio, pots, a small spot in your yard, there's very little work to setting it up. Tending plants, fruits, vegetables, flowers, and watching them grow and bloom or or yield food is rewarding. Avid gardeners say working in a garden is the best way to control stress and worry. An added benefit is the creation of a more beautiful, restful environment. Number 22, play with a dog or a cat. Experts say pet owners live longer lives and fewer stress symptoms than non-pet owners. Playing with your pet provides good vibrations for you and the pet. It's a form of social interaction with no pressure to meet anyone's expectations. Number 23, look at the stars and the moon. It can be a very humbling experience to lay on a blanket with your hands behind your head and gaze up into the night sky. It's more than humbling. It's downright beautiful and relaxing. Number 24, treat yourself to some comfort food, but be careful or overeating could become your big stressor. Enjoy in moderation and you'll feel better. Number 25, swing. Remember the feeling of sitting inside that little piece of leather on the playground as you sway back and forth and feel the wind whipping through your hair? Well, do that. If you don't have a swing in your yard, go to the playground and remember to pump your legs back and forth and see how high you can go. Number 26, take a candle-lit bubble bath. Even men will benefit from a warm bath bathed in the soft glow of candlelight. Lay your head back, feel the bubbles in the warm water, and let your stress go right out the window and down the drain. Now that you have 26 ways to relax and de-stress, you can come up with your own as well. The key really is to find something that makes you feel better when you're overwhelmed and practice that method faithfully. You'll be a healthier person overall. Just say no. This is a big issue, so let's look at it more closely. A huge problem people who are overly stressed have is the ability to say no. Maybe your mother wants you to take grandma to the store, but you're in the middle of a big work project. Perhaps your best friend asks if you wouldn't mind babysitting her kids when you've already made plans with yourself to get your hair cut. There's no reason why you can you have to say yes to everybody. In fact, there are often times when you should turn them down. If you find yourself agreeing to do things when you really don't want to, you're a people pleaser. Sounds like a nice trait to have, but it's a huge stressor. People pleasers think of other people's needs before their own. They worry about other people, what they want, think, or need, and spend a lot of time doing things for others. They rarely do things for themselves, and then they feel guilty when they do. It's hard work being a people pleaser. People pleasers hold back saying that they what they really think. They don't ask for things that they would really like and they think if someone will be upset with them if they do ask. Yet they often spend time with people who don't consider their needs at all. In fact, people pleasers often feel driven to make insensitive or unhappy people feel better, even at the detriment to themselves. Constantly trying to please other people is draining, and many people-pleasers feel anxious, worried, unhappy, and are tired a lot of the time. They may not understand why no one does anything for them when they do so much for others, and yet they don't ask for what they need. A people-pleaser may believe that if they ask someone for help and that person agrees, 
that person would be giving out of obligation, not because they really wanted to. The thinking goes, if they really wanted to help, they would be have offered without me asking. This line of thinking happens because people pleasers themselves feel obliged to help and do not always do things because they want to. Sadly, people pleasers have been taught that their worth depends on doing things for others. When they do take a moment for themselves, they feel selfish, indulgent, and guilty, which is why they're often on the go, rushing to get things done. Since people pleasers accomplish so much and are easy to get along with, they are often the first to be asked to do things. They're vulnerable, and they begin to be taken advantage of. People pleasers were most likely raised in homes where their needs and feelings were not valued, respected, or considered important. They were often expected as children to respect to or to take care of other people's needs, or they may have been silenced, neglected, or otherwise abused, thus learning that their feelings and needs were not important. In many cultures, girls were raised to be people pleasers, to think of other needs first, and to neglect their own. Most women have at least some degree of people pleasing in them. Men who identified with their mothers often do as well. People pleasers' focus is mostly on others and away from themselves. They often feel empty or don't know how to feel or what they think or what they want to focus on themselves. It's possible to change this pattern starting now. First, practice saying no. This is a very important word. Say it as often as you can, just to hear it and how it comes out of your mouth. Say it out loud when you're alone. Practice phrases with no in them, such as, no, I can't do that, or no, I don't want to go there. Try it for simply practice, and then build your way up to harder situations. Stop saying yes all the time. Try to pause or take a deep breath before responding to someone's request. You may want to answer requests with, I need to think about that first, and I'll get back to you. Or, let me check my schedule and I'll call you back. Use any phrases that you feel comfortable with that gives you time before you automatically respond with a yes. You'll feel guilty when you start it, but it won't always be so. Remember that your mental health is well worth the aggravation that you may have to take it from others. What's important is you. Figure out what gives you pleasure. For example, you may like reading magazines, watching videos, going to a park, or listening to music. Give yourself permission to do those things and then enjoy them. Ask someone to help you with something. I know this is a hard one, but you can do it. After all, everyone else is asking you for favors. Be tolerant if they turn you down. Just because you have always told them yes doesn't mean they always have to tell you yes. Many people pleasers believe that nobody will like them if they stop doing things for other people. If this happens, then you are just being used, and it's better that you aren't that those people aren't in your life anyway. People enjoy your company for who you are and not what you good, what you do. You deserve to take time for yourself, so say no and take care of yourself without feeling guilty. It's within your reach to change, one small step at a time. Take a break. So often we know inside ourselves that we need a break. That break might be a full-fledged vacation or a weekend getaway. Either way, getting out of the daily grind can be amazingly liberating and a huge way to get rid of stress and anxiety. Unfortunately, many people think that they can't take time to get away. This is toxic thinking. Get out and get away. How many times have you continued working knowing that you're not giving 100% to the task at hand? How many times have you read or written the same sentence over and over again as you keep your mind keeps wandering and thinking about other things. How often have you wanted to take a break from the family or kids but feared the consequences of doing so? It's time to take a break. Why do we not allow ourselves the time to take a time out? Perhaps we feel like we don't deserve it or that there's just not enough time. There are many genuine reasons for needing to complete jobs and tasks. However, we may also on occasion have hidden agendas as to why we cannot stop for a break. Why? Ego. Some people enjoy boasting about how late they can work in order to complete a project or how much effort they invested in order to complete a job so quickly. This type of person is often looking to impress others with their efforts, thereby increasing their ego in the process. Or perhaps you think that you can't take time off. I can't stop. I just have to get this finished. Does that sound familiar? I can't stop because the job has to be finished? Why? So I can move straight on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing? This person will find that there is always something that has to be done, which will consistently prevent him or her from taking a break. You feel that you need to be needed. A mother managing the household, kids, and other chores may feel that if her house 
world will collapse if she were to put up her feet and take the weekend off. By not taking a break, she can keep convincing herself that her role is crucial and the family would collapse without her. This may be true, but it won't happen because she's taken the time off for herself. Get rid of that thinking. You can get some amazing benefits just by taking a little time for yourself, allowing your mind and your body to rest and help refocus your attention, sharpen your wits, and increase motivation. In addition, taking time out helps to relieve stress. It can aid in the recovery of tired muscles and also promotes the discovery that there is often more to life than just work. Many athletes will tell you that the important part of their training routine is rest. Muscles need time to repair after a workout. Remember that your brain is a muscle too. It needs time to rest and recuperate in order to perform at its best. By giving your brain time off, you'll be able to better communicate and concentrate. Tasks that you once struggled with will be easier. A break can be anything from a 10-minute meditation session to a trip around the world and anything in between. A break needs you to take your mind off everyday tedium of life. When you take this rest, you absolutely cannot feel guilty about it. You need the time off, so enjoy it. You'll be a much better mother, father, wife, or husband for it. If you're feeling tired, unmotivated, or just need time to relax, don't be a martyr or look negatively at this. You may actually find that in reality, allowing yourself a break will actually help you ultimately become more efficient and effective in every part of your life. Plus, you'll get the badly needed recharging of your batteries that you need to and sorely deserve. Work can pro- probably be one of the most stressful places to be. You might think that none of these techniques can help you when you're around your coworkers. You couldn't be more wrong. Relaxing at work. Some of the suggestions in this book can certainly be practiced at work. Here's a tried and true method that you can use to relax at work. First and foremost, find a place to sit. Sit up straight with your back against the back of your chair, your feet flat on the floor, and your hands resting lightly on your thighs. If possible, close your eyes. You may do the exercise without closing your eyes, but closing your eyes will help you relax a bit more. Do not clench your eyes shut. Let your eyelids fall naturally. Breathe in slowly through your nose, counting to five. Hold the breath for a count of five, and then breathe out slowly, counting to five, and repeat. This exercise is performed by tensing and holding a set of muscles for a count of five, and then relaxing the set of muscles for a count of five. When you tense each muscle set, do it as hard as you can without hurting yourself. When you release the hold, be as relaxed as possible. Begin by tensing your feet. Do this by pulling your feet off the floor and your toes toward you while keeping your heels on the floor. Hold for a count of five. Release the hold. Let your feet fall back gently and then feel the relaxation. Think about it, how it feels compared to when you're tensed, you've tensed the muscles. Then relax for a count of five. Next, tense your thigh muscles as hard as you can. Hold for a count of five and then relax the muscles for a count of five. Then tighten your abdominal muscles. Hold for a count of five, relax the muscles for a count of five, and be sure you're continuing to sit up straight. Tense your arm and hand muscles by squeezing your hands first into fists as hard as you can. Hold for about five, relax the muscles completely for a count of five. Then tighten your upper back by pushing your shoulders back as you if you are trying to touch your shoulder blades together. Hold for a count of five, relax for a count of five. Tense your shoulders by raising them towards your ears as if shrugging and hold it for a count of five, relax for a count of five. Tighten your neck, first by gently moving your head back as if looking at the ceiling, and holding for five, relax for five. Then gently drop your head forward and hold for five, and relax for five. Tighten your face muscles. First, open your mouth wide and hold for five, relax for five. Then raise your eyebrows up high and hold for five, and relax for five. Finally, clench your eyes tightly shut, hold for five, relax with your eyes gently closed for five. Finish the exercise with breathing. Breathe in slowly through your nose, counting to five, and then hold the breath for a count of five. Breathe out slowly, counting to five, and repeat four times, and that's it. Perform this exercise whenever you need to relax, whether it's on the plane or in a car or any place else that you might be sitting. Because the exercises may be very relaxing, it should not be performed while driving. Over time, it If performed regularly, these exercises will help you recognize tension in your body. You'll be able to relax muscles at any time rather than performing the entire exercise. 
Perform at least twice a day for long-term results. You may develop your own longer relaxation exercises by adding more muscle groups. Pinpoint your own areas of tension, then tense and relax the areas at the same way. Maximize the relaxation benefits of this exercise by visualizing a peaceful scene at the end of the exercise. Visualize a scene, a place where you feel relaxed in detail for at least five minutes. Remember the happy place? Go there and enjoy it. Conclusion. There's no way to completely eliminate stress from your life. What you can do is learn how to make the stress work for you. Stress management isn't as difficult as it might actually seem. However, if you think you have too much stress in your life, it may be helpful to talk with your doctor, spiritual advisor, or local mental health association. Reactions to stress can be a factor in depression, anxiety, and other disorders. They might suggest that you visit a psychiatrist, psychologist, social worker, or other qualified counselor. The author is not a medical professional. This book should not be used as a tool that will help you cope with stress. Stress management tips are simple, cost-effective methods to effectively check your stress. They can be practiced almost anywhere at any time. Stress is a normal part of life, and in small quantities, it's good. It can motivate you to help you become more productive. However, too much stress or a strong response to stress is harmful. It can set you up for generally poor health as well as specific physical or psychological illnesses like infection, heart disease, or depression. Persistent and unrelenting stress often lends to anxiety and unhealthy behaviors like overeating and abuse of alcohol or drugs. Just like the causes of stress differ from person to person, what relieves stress is not the same for everyone. In general, however, making certain lifestyle changes as well as finding healthy, enjoyable ways to cope with stress helps most people. Above all, remember that there is no way to alone in this battle. There are hundreds of thousands of people who are out there who feel overwhelmed. Hopefully, you'll find peace with yourself and enjoy life to its fullest. When you feel yourself stressed out or best with a panic attack, relax, breathe through it, and know that there are many, many people who feel exactly the same way that you do.